Hello, my name is Jordan, and I have 10 essential tips for beginners that are starting to play Dark and Darker. Whether it's your first experience in the extraction genre, or you've played other games like Escape from Tarkov, or Marauders, The Cycle Frontier, there's a few. I've put together this list of 10 tips because they've helped me survive more, get better loot, and to have more fun in the process. So without further ado, let's start with number one. One of the most basic but important skills that you can learn in Dark and Darker is to effectively fight the monsters. This is gonna help you save on healing items that you bring into the dungeon and so that you're at full health when you get into fights with other players. Each monster has their own unique attack pattern, but there's a rather simple way to make sure that you almost never get hit by their attacks. By far the most important skill that I think anybody can have in Dark and Darker is killing the mobs in an area without taking damage. The best technique for achieving this is by baiting out the attacks from the mobs and then punishing them in between their attacks. Most monsters will follow you until they're within range of their attacks, so I see a lot of beginners backing themselves into a corner and then trying to dodge attacks when you have no space left. It is a much better strategy to actually run straight up to the mob, get them to take a swing while stepping back, and then move forward again to hit them one to four times, depending on the speed of your weapon and the time in between the attacks of the specific mob. It is important to not get greedy because if you try and fit in one more attack, that is when you run out of time to back off and will get hit by their attack. Just like in some FPS games, there are damage modifiers depending on which part of the body you attack. The head being the highest damage multiplier, with the torso being next, and then the arms and legs. The reticle on the screen when wielding a weapon in Dark and Darker is an indication of where your swing or stab will land. Making most, if not all of your attacks headshots will allow you to clear out mobs a lot faster, making it less likely that you'll be attacked by other players mid-fight against monsters. One of my favorite ways to clear the dungeon is actually luring the mobs over the spike traps to help deal extra damage to them. I'll often use the method from tip number one to bait them into an attack animation while they're standing on the trap to keep them stuck there and take more damage. I especially like using this method on ranged monsters like the skeleton mage and the skeleton archers. One downside to this is that you'll miss out on potential XP from killing the mob yourself, so keep that in mind. Tip number four is especially relevant if you're doing any solo runs in the trios dungeon, because it is extremely difficult to shake a team of three that has chosen to pursue you through the dungeon. When you spawn in or enter a new room, I highly recommend opening various doors around you to provide options for escape, or to have more room to kite the mobs around. Another benefit of having doors or gates pre-opened is that if another team or a player tries to chase you, you can go through the open door and close it behind you. Since opening a door is a longer interaction, it will provide you with necessary moments to either hide or make your escape. However, keep in mind that one danger from this method is that you might accidentally aggro mobs in adjacent rooms that you haven't cleared yet. So do be cautious. Using healing is a big part of the game since chances are that you're going to be taking damage at one point or another. Even if you're doing your best to avoid it, you will take damage from the mobs or the zone at some point. So tip number five is to use a healing potion followed by a bandage. This will optimize the time it takes for a bandage to be used while you're passively healing from the potion. Doing it the other way around is a waste of time, which is a precious resource you could be spending on clearing mobs or looting. The various potions in Dark and Darker are a great tool, but can often get you killed. When you have a potion in your utility slots, these will actually show up on your hip in game. So don't think you're being sneaky hiding in the dark somewhere when you have three glowing Christmas ornaments on your hips. Although it requires a few more mouse clicks, I would suggest you keep the potions in your bag until you really need them. Unless you don't care about stealth and want to have the quickest access possible. Each weapon has its own movement speed penalty attached to it. Normally bigger weapons will make you run slower and smaller weapons won't affect your speed as much. So if you want to catch up to someone or run away from someone, try putting your weapon away to maximize your speed while running. It's a bit of a risk since you'll have to spend a second pulling it back out, but keep in mind that if your pursuers want to keep up with you, they'll most likely have to put theirs away too. A lot of combat in this game is based on how fast you move 
And so it's always important to factor in how much movement speed your weapons and armor are taking up. You only have so much space in your inventory, and when you're bringing in healing, utility items like lockpicks, and even ammo for your bow, you start to run out of space for loot pretty quickly. So tip number eight is that in general, single slot loot has a higher value per slot average. Simply put, if a single item is worth five gold, then to make a two or four slot item worth it, it needs to be at least worth 10 or 20 gold to keep the average slot value the same. Unfortunately, most of the two and four slot loot that you'll find is not that valuable. The biggest waste of space are the goblets and the bigger loot items. The best single slot loot items are the gems, followed by the triple gem and the leaf gold bangles. The wiki doesn't have any information yet on the new items that can drop from the mobs, like the skull, moldy bread, bones, cloth, golden tooth, mimic tongue, etc. But as a general rule, if it is cracked or flawed, the gray or white rarity, and takes up more than one slot, it's probably not worth it. Another important note is that the value of loot doesn't change much from the gray to white rarity, but from the white to green rarity, the value starts going up by a lot. So don't stress out too much about min-maxing your loot by rarity when it's white and gray. Just focus on getting single slot loot and any higher rarity multi-slot loot that you can find. And I'll link the wiki in the description in case you wanna look for yourself. Tip nine is kind of a small tip, but Consistently grabbing a lantern here and there can really add up over time. Hey, if it doesn't take up any extra slots in your inventory, why not? There are also higher rarities of lanterns that are worth more to the traders too, so focus on those. There are many ways to play Dark and Darker, and I'm not going to try and tell you how to have fun. But I know a lot of people trying out this game are coming from Battle Royales or conventional FPS games. And extraction games are just a little bit different and I think this can cause frustration for a lot of newcomers. There are no specific goals in this game, so try and find what you enjoy most. Some people enjoy looting, for others it's the PvP, bossing, mining, or just collecting a bunch of juicy loot. I really enjoy using proximity chat to talk to other people and make friends, or just say silly things. Even if you're dying every match and you feel terrible, just choose one aspect of the game to get better at and focus on that. It's not an easy game and you might get discouraged. This game has a super high skill ceiling and so who knows what unique strategy or method you'll come up with if you just keep trying. And if you need someone to cry with because you lost your sweet sweet cobalt boots that you just crafted, then make sure to stop by my live streams where I'm playing Dark and Darker most every day. Well, if you found these 10 tips helpful, then please do leave a comment. It does help a lot with the YouTube algorithm and let me know which one you like the most or which one that you already knew. Thanks so much for watching and I will see you all in the next one. Peace out.